Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning, welcome you all to the next lecture in this particular MOS biospectroscopy topic uh, in our ongoing course on the analytical spectroscopy and microscopy applications of inorganic compounds and nanomaterials. So, in the previous class, I have built all the basic ingredients required for this particular topic, the MOS biospectroscopy, which gives information regarding the oxidation state of the that element, the Mosbauer element, the electronic surroundings, the symmetric surroundings uh, and the type of ligands if it is an organic compound etc. All these things are uh, affecting the spectra of this. So, in this essential we have looked at three parameters, the isomer shift, the quadrupolar coupling and the, the magnetic uh, Zeeman. So, using these things you can identify in a compound if it is a having different kinds of uh, centers there. For example, you take uh, the iron oxide magnetite. Okay, So, you may have not necessarily one surrounding for the iron, there could be different surroundings for the iron. So, each of those you can identify from the mass buyer spectra. Okay? So, this isomer shift will help because their isomer shift values will change. And quadrupolar couplings depending upon the symmetry that you have for each of these and the kind of an electric field that is being created symmetric or asymmetric would also shift or split your lines or the separation of your lines two lines into smaller or greater. So, the lesser the asymmetry the lesser the quadrupolar coupling the greater the asymmetry the greater the quadrupolar coupling is that. So, we have that as well. And then you can apply the external magnetic field or at times some magnetic materials internally you will also have the magnetic Zeeman effect. So, from that you can identify the set of lines coming from one center, the set of lines coming from another center. So, by looking at the areas of all these peaks you can identify the two suppose assume there are two types of centers or two such kind of a Fe 3O4 centers are there in that particular thing. You can get the ratio how much of this versus how much of that. Okay? So, since the ferromagnetic phenomena are size dependent, so uh, you can also use the spectra to study the, the crystalline size or crystallite size and the grain structure of the material. So, you can apply in the nanomaterials very happily. So, this is a good application for that. Now, if you take an example shown here, this particular thing, etc. Here, so you have an example, a crystal structure, the magnetite Fe3O4. If it supports two kinds of a different centers from the crystal structure, you can see one has one kind of an environment, other has a different kind of an environment, either a number of nearest neighbors or the distance of the nearest neighbors or a combination of both. That will become two different iron centers, and those things can become you have already seen each of the ion center can give six lines here because of this magnetic when you put under the of course the magnetic field or if there is a strong intra compound magnetic field arises also then the shifts of course will be different and the average shift which is called the uh, chemical shift will not change at all your chemical shift value will not change so you can get six lines at this and that is what uh, and now, if you have two such centers, you will get a six lines plus another six lines, 12 lines, but you may or may not see all the 12, maybe some few of them may be overlapping also, but you can deconvolute and get it. Okay? So, what is that we are doing now? We are holding the parameter of isomer shift in our hand, quadrupolar splitting, and the magnetic uh, Zeeman using together combinedly, you can analyze the compounds with respect to the. Magnet, uh, the Mosbauer nuclei 
what is their surrounding, what is their oxidation state, uh, what kind of a symmetry, all of these. Let us start looking at some examples so that we understand. So, applications of MOS spectroscopy to inorganic compounds, but of the iron. There are things available for tin, iodine, platinum, silver to some extent, but we are not looking at all of them. Only the iron, we are going to look at that. That is most predominantly available in the literature because of the availability of easy availability of source of the cobalt source for that. Now, let us come into the application mode, understanding mode. How do we draw your attention to this slide, please? And I think most often you will be looking at the slides now on because I will be directing it uh, at the spectra. Now, this spectra has uh, the, this is for the iron sulfate 7H2O. In this, iron is iron 2 because from the coordination chemistry you understood that the iron 2 is in a high spin. And this because of the quadrupolar coupling, you know, which comes from the the asymmetric electric field that you have surrounding the iron nucleus. Here, the iron is the mass bar nucleus, basically, or you can say absorber. Then you have quadrupolar splitting, so it gives two. The center of this will be your quadru uh, the isomer shift. The center of this. So this is somewhere minus 0 0.05 here, and this is plus 0.28, and together by two, that will be your isomer shift here. Did you get the isomer shift? How do you find? You find the position on the x axis of this and the position of x axis of this and average of that and the center point of that instead of saying average. Okay, and what is there on the x axis which is not shown over there? It is the mm per second. So, mm per second is what? Velocity. So, what you use? The x axis is a velocity units. What is velocity? Velocity is the one source you are moving towards or moving away from the source, uh, from the absorber, from the sample. So, that movement velocity that you are talking about. So, what is minus velocity? No, there is nothing called minus velocity. The minus sign shows that it is going from the resting position, the emitter towards away from it. Away from it is shown by the negative, towards it shown by the positive. So, uh, uh, so you can use those things. So, that is what you have. Now, you got it, right? Now, you look at the right top next to that is the FeCl3. FeCl3 is obviously the iron 3 chloride and iron 3 chloride, chloride groups, ligands are weak field ligands. So, therefore, iron 3 iron is in the uh, high oxidation, high spin state, sorry, high spin state that is what we know very well. And this one does not give too clearly, but you can always try to see the and split and get it. The reason is the quadrupole splitting value is small. So, that is why you see as if it is 1. So, do not try to mug the iron 3 will give 1 peak, the iron 2 will give 2 peaks etc. No, no, never keep that kind of things in mind. This also gives 2 peaks, but the distance between the 2 peaks is very small and that is what it shows. So, you can uh, see this is the your isomer shift. So, isomer shift is around plus 0.1 here okay? and here it is much bit more than that in this. Now, let us look at another compound, the iron hexacyano, the potassium ferricyanide. So, this one in the iron 2, potassium 4 plus, and this is in the we know very well cyanide ligand is a strong field ligand and it is a iron uh, low spin state. So, the in the low spin state of the iron, you can see that it comes somewhere close to close to that of the 0. This should have also showed doublet, but the doublet are overlapped. Therefore, you do not see as if it is like a one single peak, but you can see the isomer shift here, the isomer shift here, the isomer shift here, they are all different. Now, you look at the other combination that is uh, the K3 FeCN6, that is for the iron 3, which is the D5, Cn is a strong field ligand and it is a low spin. Low spin means that T2G5 with octahedral and of which the, the two pairs and one unpaired electron that you see that. Here you can see the doublet and the difference between these two is small and that is why you could not see somewhat similar to that. So, this also depends upon why in some cases the difference between the two peaks is very far, some cases a little less, some cases almost nothing, 
So, this, this is the one which talks about the surrounding symmetry. Okay. In other words, the electric field distribution that will depend upon the ligands and geometry. Okay. So, all of these. Now, what we have seen? We have seen the four different things for the iron story. You can understand the iron uh, most commonly existing in iron 2 and the iron 3. <coughs> iron 3 plus and most commonly exists in the iron 2. There are other oxidation states. It is not that I say that they are not there, but most commonly these are the ones and predominantly that you found. In each case, you have a low spin and a high spin state. So, you I am sure you are aware of those things. Uh, and this. So, this is called HS, this is called LS low spin. Similarly, here also and those who know about the iron 2 story, there is something called intermediate spin, but I will not confuse you at this stage with that. Iron 3 plus will have only two states of the iron, the, the low spin and the high spin. So, totally what you have? 4. So, there are two oxidation states most commonly found 2 plus and 3 plus, and then low spin, high spin, and low spin, high spin. So, what you have four combinations. Now, an iron in normal conditions can exist iron 3 with a high spin, iron 3 with a low spin, iron 2 with a high spin, iron 2 with a low spin. How do you identify which one is existing in your compound? So, that is where I will explain you just in a while. Right now, you have seen the differences in the spectra, the isomer shifts, and the quadrupolar, and I will give you more detail on a later slide. But for the time being, let us look at another example. Here, the depression blue is nothing but iron Fe, uh, this uh, Cn6. Uh, this is the 3 times, this is the 4, ok, that is means 3. Ok. So, in this, you have the iron 3 and this is the iron 2. And two. This is the four minus twelve minus. This is twelve plus. So that is the total together is the complex. This can be synthesized by two methods, and one is you take the iron two starting uh, sino complex, add iron three plus, or you take the iron three sino complex, add iron two plus salt in two ways, and that is what the spectra is seen. Kindly look at this uh, slide and the top and the right is shown two parts, two differently prepared and this is prepared from A method and this is prepared from the B method. So, in one case you have taken the iron 2 sino complex added iron 3, in the other case you have taken the iron 3 sino complex added iron 2 plus. Now, if you look at the spectra that you got here and this is one peak which is strongly shaded one and the light shaded one. So, these are by deconvolution. So, you see basically one big and, and this is so broad it will becomes the two of them. Okay. So, the 1, 2 and 3. So, this one is the iron 2 low spin and you can see somewhat some, something like this you can you see that. So, and this is iron 3 high spin which is somewhere here kind of thing which is a doublet and which is coming over there. So, whether you make from this method or the other method then you can still see that this is the. So, the now the areas will tell you whether the compositionally whether that is the same or different because one tells you about the iron 3 center other tells you about the iron 2 center and then the both areas you can compare and then get the information. So, you can see the uh, spins and the oxidation states. Now, let us move to the, the next slide gives uh, some data if you do not care, it looks like a numbers, but there is a lot one needs to care for this. So, so what do we do? We look at uh, these. We, do we need to remember the numbers? Absolutely no. There is nothing to mug, but I will tell you how to understand this. And this gives the isomer shift is also shown as the delta value and the quadrupolar coupling is shown as the delta EQ. These are the two data which is given. 
and the magnetic coupling will give you only the number of lines. So, that is not uh, uh, shown here. So, these are shown for different compounds and as I told you the isomer shift depends on the electron s electron density felt at the mass bar nuclei because of the surrounding ligands surrounding things etc electron releasing electron withdrawing all these kinds of things affecting the mass bar nuclei that is where it comes from and the delta eq which is isomer shift comes from the how this electric field is distributed with respect to the mass bar nucleus i also told you earlier the greater the value of the delta eq or the quadrupolar coupling the greater the asymmetry is the less of the symmetry is so if you highly symmetric then that means your electric field is almost having no gradient then you will get only single that means the two lines will merge one over the other and the delta eq will become close to that of the zero so it's a kind of a parameter tells you about the symmetry electronic symmetry about that because ligands will we call it as electronic factors so with respect to metal and that's what you are looking at now here there are four regions given and the table kindly look at the table please and this uh, uh, on the slide please and the, uh, where the table is there and the the high spin iron 2 the low spin iron 2 then high spin iron 3 and the low spin iron 3 so what is basically you look at is that so if you look at the delta value that means the isomer shift you can see the iron 2 high spins are somewhere more than one value of delta value and if you look at the high spin iron 3 then these are little lower than the one so the higher than the one in case of iron 2 and the lower than the one in case of the iron 3 because we've seen that the iron 3 will make more negative that means less positive so both are high spin you're comparing okay number one comparison so similarly you can also look at the delta value of the low spin iron 2 and low spin iron 3 it's a bit difficult to compare but on an average the negative value is slightly higher in case of iron 2 slightly higher in case of iron 2 as compared to iron 3 the difference may not be very vivid in this but rough thing so that means we could see four different zones of the delta value isomer shift zone 1 highly positive little less positive less a uh, little more negative little less negative roughly four quadrants you can make here and then understand the delta values of that so the delta values of that if you put uh, a kind of a uh, this thing okay so this is your delta the positive delta with the negative uh, and uh, so therefore you can see how these are getting uh, make uh, this thing so highly positive you would get iron uh, 2 high spin the low positive so these are the regions the low positive here will will be iron 3 uh, high spin and the negative so if you see the lower negative is somewhat uh, the low spin iron 3 uh, fe3 and more negative is the low spin iron 2 low spin iron 2 so that's how you find the kind of a things you can see board i have shown you the way roughly but between the low spin iron 2 iron 3 some little difficulty is possible there is more overlap but that can be resolved by looking at the second quantity the second quantity is isomer shift which is the delta eq value all of these are shown in mm per second so you should you can compare with respect to whatever the standard that you have taken order the reference you have taken now you can see here in the iron 2 high spin this delta eq is very high value and if you look at the iron 3 high spin very low value okay and uh, here you won't get a negative all will get be positive because two lines difference there is nothing called negative okay that difference could be zero can be small can be little big can be little more big and that's how it is what you have but you don't have negative here only in isomer shift you can have negative you can have positive in the quadrupolar coupling you will have only one that is the positive so you have very large values very small values for iron 3 then if you look at iron 2 low spin somewhat intermediate kind of thing 
and again iron 3 low spin quite low I mean as much as this it can follow. So, by combining delta value and the delta E q. So, this plus this if you use together use together that means do not uh, do not add the values that is not correct this and this not I mean plus. So, the delta and delta E q together using together you can sort it out whether the iron in your compound is in 2 plus is in 3 plus. If it is 2 plus it is in a high spin that is low, plus, low spin. If it is in 3 plus that is high spin or low spin. And I tell you this is only the technique the Mosmoire is only the technique at one shot will clarify all these four combinations possible combinations. No other other cases you can clarify, but you have to do more experiments. So, that is one thing that you need to look at there. So, I hope now you understood how to uh, look at these numbers the table most of the time these are tables so how will I how am I concerned you are absolutely concerned about this table if you do not look at this table and analyze you have missed a lot of lot of lot on it. Now, here again you have a lot of compounds here a lot of compounds here that is not the important aspect of it they are in the category of high spin iron 2 low spin iron 2 high spin iron 3 low spin iron 3. Now, suppose you have these uh, different centers etcetera as I talked to you earlier isomer shift should give only one, but because of the asymmetric uh, electric field quadrupole coupling you will get two if you apply field external magnetic field you will get a six. So, that means the Mosboer you will find a singlet if nothing of this happening or you will find that is a I am talking about the Mosboer of iron. Because your nuclear I will differ not for every case. So, those who have a 3 by 2 and half ground state and 3 by 2 excited state for those and then this will give sex state. So, under the magnetic field. So, this is the direct resonance this is the quadrupolar coupling or electric field and this is the magnetic field. So, that means that different magnetic fields you can study and whenever you have a difficulty if the overlap is close increase the magnetic field they will get separate then you can get a bifurcation you can get an area you can tell the uh, how much amount is there. Now, let us look at on the right side in this particular slide kindly draw your attention uh, a spec two things are there not for the spectrum first let us look at the table on the top on the right side and with respect to this. So, we do not need to worry about that if all of them are with respect to something it is ok then it is not with respect to uh, iron powder it is respect to Na 2 Fe C and phi N O which with respect to that. So, be keep in mind the values otherwise would have been different. So, oxidation state iron this is all for iron plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 6 different compounds different oxidation states. Sometimes you can have a mixed valence compound also then you will have the both things then isomer shift. So, plus 1 2.2 is a highly positive plus 2 little less positive much less positive almost close to 0 and minus. So, as you increase the oxidation state of the iron center. So, you are decreasing the isomer shift you are making more negative that is because the there is a, the more greater s electron density felt at the mass by nuclear or iron and the kind of a shielding coming from the other electrons will be much less. So, therefore, greater feel of s electron density at that and that is what is making it more negative. Now, let us look at uh, the one below is that we have uh, F E 3 C O 12 compound it is mass buoyer. And please look at the slide uh, here this is the mass buoyer spectrum and how do you fit this in terms of the structure ok. So, if you look at that there is uh, a pair here with, with similar uh, areas there is another pair here if you deconvolute you will find two with similar energy uh, areas. So, therefore, these are coming from one and these are coming from the other kind of thing. And if you look at another point the area of this and is half of the area of this peak plus area of this peak. So, area of this area of this together is twice to the area of this. So, that means you have you know that you have three irons and the three irons are giving 2 is to 1 ratio. That means, two of the irons have the similar surrounding or similar coordination 
or similar geometry and one of the iron has a different surrounding a different coordination and different kind of a geometry. So, you can see that here the structure these two are equal and, and different from this. So, these you call it as the A type, this you call it B type. So, the signal coming from here, so there is minus 0.2 and plus 1.2 and, and by 2 it will be 0.5 and here this is the plus and this is plus and uh, it will come where, uh, somewhere around here. So, you have two different ion centers, but their average value is the delta value, but by looking at this you can tell the area of this is half of the area of this plus that and that is what is happening. So, you have a greater one a pair of these which has got a greater the separation. Why? The symmetry there must be much low in symmetry and you can see these will have the lower in symmetry. And if you look at here, this will have a bit higher in symmetry, almost very close to symmetric. That is why this has become almost negligible in quadrupolar splitting. So, that also you can get. So, out of these three, these three irons, two of them are one type, one is other type, and those two have got a the surrounding which is less symmetric, and this has got a, a surrounding which is more symmetric. What is surrounding? The coordination and the coordination geometry, that is what the surrounding is. That is carbonyls that are bound to this. This is Fe3CO12. This, this at A, there are two types, both are A type. There is iron, iron here, another iron here, totally three. So, three ions and uh, 4 plus 3 plus 3, 10, and the two bridge, uh, the, the 12. So, the 12 iron. So, this has a bridging, this does not have. So, electronically, they will differ. So, therefore, symmetrically, they differ. So, electric field gradient differs, therefore, your Qs differs. So, delta E Q changes and that is how it is. Now, let us look at some other example. Here I have two compounds, again I draw your attention to this uh, slide please. Uh, there are two compounds, one on the left, uh, the two compounds and their mass by spectra and their mass by spectra as a function of temperature. And so, now let us look at one is with the iron 2 plus with three phenanthylene ligands. So, iron 2 plus with three phenanthylene ligands that you have and another compound on the right side, iron 2 with the uh, two phenanthylenes and two thiocyanate ligands. So, out of the six coordination, one of the phenanthylene is last and in place of that. So, now what differs in terms of their uh, mass buyer spectra? That is what we need to have a look at that and how do we understand? We already know if they are iron 2 with the low spin where it comes, iron 2 with the high spin where it comes that we already know and how their delta E q changes. All these things we have, we have already learned now by now. Now, it is so you should need to apply this information here. Okay, here this one and this difference shows and the value of the delta and the difference shows highly symmetric because you can see very little asymmetry here and therefore, and also this value will tell you the iron 2. So, the iron 2 with the low spin will give you for this. You change the temperature from room to 240 to 80 to 5 liquid nitrogen, liquid helium. Nothing is happening, same. So, no further splitting, no further movement, nothing is happening. So, this low spin iron 2 complex is highly symmetric, does not get influenced by the temperature variation. Now, come to this side and this side you have only removed one 110 phenanthylene, replaced with the two thiocyanates. Again, this is a this compound is iron 2 thiocyanate ligands here. So, you can see that. Now, at room temperature there are two uh, lines and these two lines are farther apart. And if you look at their delta value, that is isomership will be little different than what you have here. And this is coming from the high spin kind of a, uh, not so much different, but uh, a little different. So, that will tell you the high spin iron 2. Now, as you go down the temperature 180 here, then you start seeing some inner lines here. You see that there is a little two inner lines, two inner lines and these inner lines become stronger here and the outer lines is completely disappeared. 
So the outer lines is completely disappeared. So what has happened? Entire high spin compound at the room temperature, by the time you, you reach the liquid nitrogen, it has become low spin. And this is what is used in variety of you know applications in sensors, etc. So the high spin, low spin variation by changing the temperature. Okay. So what do you have changed here? The one of the one ten phenanthrolic ligand is replaced by the two thiocyanate ligands. So the spin transition is taking place. This is called spin transition, and the spin transition can be very clearly, cleanly identified, observed by looking at the mass bias spectra. You can see the mass bias spectra of the tris phenanthrolin and bis phenanthrolin with the thiocyanate ligands. So it's I mean, completely goes to that liquid nitrogen to the L low, low spin and completely high spin at the room temperature and this is the spin transitions etc of that. I think we will uh, keep looking at uh, many more examples as we keep moving across. I think for this time being you have a look at the whatever the examples I have explained to you and uh, later we will take some more some natural naturally obtained substances like the biological ones like, like rock samples coming from other planets some of the examples of that and many other so examples of that we will look at in the classes to come. Thank you very much.